I'd like to call the Community Television of Santa Cruz County Board of Directors meet regular meeting February 27th, 2014 to order. Um, I'd like to do roll call. Um, I'm here. Nathan's yep. here. James is here. Present. Tess is not at the moment. Joe is not. Karen is. Matilda. Yep. Dory. Yes. Alu. No Adam. Tom is here. Present. Yes. Okay. So we have a quorum. Okay. Uh, this is time for oral communications. Is there anyone who would like to address the board? I don't see an audience, so <laughs> I think we can skip that one. Okay. Um, consideration of late additions to the agenda. I would like to add to the agenda, um, I guess it would be 9A. A resolution to change the signers on the checking in. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else have a suggestions for the agenda? Okay. Okay. Uh, the consent agenda includes two items: approve the minutes of the previous board meeting on January 11th, and approve the recommendation of the finance committee. The finance committee did not have a quorum. Uh, Tessa and I went through the finances and we talked to Kathy and everything seems fine. So we'll leave that to her report. So we're going to strike five from the consent agenda and at least four on the consent agenda. And I make a motion. Okay. okay. I'll second. I move, I move that we approve the minutes from uh, the regular board meeting January 11th, 2014. Great. And Billy, second, I'll second. second them. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Seeing none. We'll go to the regular agenda. It and is. We have the oral report of the executive director. Okay. So I've passed out a um, written report as well, just to supplement my oral report. So um, I wanted folks to. Uh, to hear a couple of really key things. Um, we are about six months through our transition. So I think that's important to just, yay, we've made yay, it to the six months. <laughs> so we're very happy about yeah. that. Um, the staff and board members have been working really hard and I just, I wanna really acknowledge Keith because I could not have um, done this work without him. Come on in guys. Just getting started. So we have two chairs if you would like to join us. Um, and there, are there additional ED report packets that we can give to these two? Perfect. Exact right number for that. Mm -hmm. So I was just pointing out uh, a little bit of a celebration, guys, that we are halfway through. We're six yeah. months through um, this year-long contract with uh, both the county and also between CMAP and CTVs. So I was also um, wanting to really acknowledge Keith because um, Keith has been doing every, I, I mean, he might as well be washing the dishes. Um, yeah. Thankfully, he hasn't had to do that, but he's been doing it, everything else. Uh, and I just really want to acknowledge him. It, it wouldn't have been possible, I think, for any ED to come in and um, be able to do this kind of really difficult change management work that we've had to do this year with that support, so thank you. So, um, and I also want to acknowledge the staff. Um, you know, I think any kind of big transition like this um, is really difficult, and both staff and our members and volunteers have um, really been supportive, especially in the last couple of months, and so we've made a lot of strides, and thanks to the support of the county as well for having faith in us. Appreciate that. So please pass that on to everyone at the county. Um, so staffing changes, I, I just have highlighted a couple of achievements, and because you haven't had time to read it, I will read a few of uh, the key ones out loud to you, and then if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, you know, the main changes that we've made since your last meeting that we were, um, I think, in January, but also really kind of talked more about some of the transition uh, back in November. Um, we really made a lot of changes that would minimize our expenses. Um, one of the things that Keith and Tess looked at when they were looking at uh, the finances is that we're at about, what, 51% of the expended income, and yet we are at, um, we have about 58 plus percent of the income in. So we're, our expenses are less than our income coming in so far. So that's really good. So we're happy about that, and we need to continue on that path. And actually, um, that'll be even more true, I think, after we have paid all of our obligations out to um, former employees and bills that we have now 
minimized. So there's a number of things, um, some small, you know, not getting the Sentinel uh, paper every day, uh, you know, $20 off our budget every day. <laughs> Uh, when we can go online to really large things like having uh, two bills for insurance that um, we really didn't need and minimizing um, but still offering the same benefit. So just looking for ways to do that. We've been doing that quite a bit. We've created a lot of automation and efficiency and we've reorganized how the work actually is done at CTV. Uh, we've really increased staff accountability a lot and we've reduced our, our staff resources and our expenses in that area. We've been training staff since day one um, to build their capacity and we're creating internal policies that really clarify and correct some of the policy challenges that have um, been had by this organization in the past. And I think that's um, making folks of the county really happy to see that movement and that progress forward and it's making us really happy as well. So um, some of those areas, the technology changes, um, you can look through those. I think we've talked a lot about them. Nick also talks about it in the programming update that's um, later on in my ED report. Um, we have a certified volunteer program and also fee-based services that we're going to be providing. Those are really the only two user groups at CTV anymore. Mm -hmm. So there are the certified volunteers and there are the fee-based users. Um, so when we talk about membership, we are still asking people to be members, but membership means something really differently than it meant in the, in the past. It means that you can either use the fee-based services um, and take classes, um, or you can become a certified volunteer and participate and receive sort of store credit for your work here at CTV as a volunteer. And we are going to have volunteers work on some paid productions and some Productions, um, we call them at CMAP, we haven't come up with a name here, we call them Cover 3 because they are coverage of one of the three communities we serve, we need to come up with a name here. But basically we can have people go out and provide community coverage, but it's all volunteer and it's not something we can guarantee anymore because we don't have funding for that. Uh, the volunteer program has been going along very well. We have a new security system and key cards that we'll be giving us data online that we'll be launching. Uh, we did get approval on the loan just yesterday, okay. so um, after we can get, uh, I've just gotten them all the, there was a few more pieces of paperwork from our insurance company that they needed additionally. They also went through some changes over there during our application process, so we have all new people we're dealing with, um, so that's been actually fine, but it did take a little bit longer than we expected. We purchased some of the equipment just out of the operating funds. Um, Keith had authorized us to go ahead on some of that because we needed to do some of those changes quickly. And then with regard to um, the main studio build, we are behind on that. Come on in. Uh, the main studio build, uh, we won't be able to do until we actually get the loan in our hands, but it's a cash secured loan. I think everybody probably was at the retreat and remembers us having that discussion. Um, it's so that we can then pay ourselves back um, for capital expenses later on down the road. So uh, I do want to mention we'll be creating, still in, uh, enabled to do free PSAs for nonprofit groups, and it's all going to be volunteer-based. Keith's actually offered to kind of take the lead and work with our team, our volunteer team on that. Um, we've done a lot of work around professionalizing our reputation and our content, and I really want to emphasize how difficult that process has been <laughs> because it's taken a lot more time than we ever anticipated here. We thought we were just going to come in and be able to start doing productions and get to work, but actually a lot of the work that we've had to do is repairing our reputation with clients. Every single client that we worked with was problematic. There hasn't been one who was like, oh, you guys are great. Every single one said, you didn't meet the deadline, you didn't make the changes I asked for, I had something that I asked you for in May of 2012 and I've still never seen it. So we've had a lot of problems around that. And I just want to be very honest that that's a problem we had to come in and make some changes around. So um, I want to really give kudos to Jeremy Whalen, who's our new director of product uh, productions and content, who's done a very good job on repairing those relationships. Um, he writes really great emails, and his personal uh, touch with all these clients uh, in person is really great as well. And he has been doing productions literally within a 24-hour turnaround time. Wow. He will go out and shoot it. He calls them hyper-productions. Um, and he'll go out and shoot something and then literally have it already edited and up and on the cable channels no later than the next day. Can I just ask a question? The sure. clients you went out and talked to that where you were dealing with are historically bad reputation? Yes. 
are they receptive to the fact that you know you've made changes and are, are we losing clients? Uh, I think most of them are. I think there's one that we're having to prove ourselves to through an event that we're doing in two weeks. So we'll see how he feels after we finish that. Um, I mean, we literally didn't, uh, I think we gave them half price this year. And last year, um, we didn't even deliver the product to him. So he has a reason not to feel good about us. Yeah. But um, we are going to be shooting his event. It's great content for the channels as well. And he's also paying us for it. And we are getting a few new clients too, which is great. Uh, we did the wrestling, high school wrestling last Friday, four camera shoot, a little more work than the you know typical uh, hyper production where you're just going out and shooting one topic really quickly, but um, <coughs> definitely doing a lot of those kinds of things as well. So we are bringing, we're generating money coming in and I think that will continue. Uh, we only have Jeremy 20 hours a week. Right now he's sort of a little skewed to, to the CTV direction. We're gonna be pulling him back over the hill um, soon, but I think this kind of cleanup work required a lot of time from him. Uh, I will move on. The relaunch is happening on April 15th. Uh, we, like I said, we're going to be charging for services that we once offered for free. And uh, we'll be relaunching the cable channels. We're actually starting with the u.gov. So we have the u.gov cable channel that is, um, has mostly been channel 25. I get that I was gonna say 17 and I'm like wait a minute that's not that's CMAP um, so channel 25 has traditionally been the government channel so we're trying to schedule it so that it is really the only government channel 26 is the cruise channel and 27 is the community channel one of the things I would love feedback offline from board members maybe after this meeting or shooting an email as to what you would like to call the community channel because um, free speech TV and keep Santa Cruz weird have been ruled out uh, but what is a way that we can kind of encourage the community to participate in the public access channel mm -hmm. through the name and then we'll be doing a logo contest for that as well on uh, 99 designs or one of those websites very soon but we will have already kicked off um, the other two channels before we do that um, the event we're going to be holding uh, here, we'll have the new studio ready, and we would love for you, please, to all put that in your calendar from 5 to 7 on April 15th. Yes, it is tax day, and uh, it was actually um, a local elected, former elected official who said, why don't you do it on tax day? Um, because it's something positive is happening on tax day, so we might get some good news around that. So we're hoping to pitch that with our messaging. Um, Tom Mannheim has uh, offered to help me on messaging strategy, so he and I will be coming up with the press release and the next steps forward on that. Um, and then I think one of the things that we sort of had interrupted slightly is we had our development director um, do early retirement. He's now left the organization. And so in lieu of having a development director, in lieu of having a bookkeeping staff, or an operations uh, coordinator, we are having to take on a lot of work right now. So um, we do have some just some contract-based work for a bookkeeper, um, a couple hours a week coming in and helping us. I am also writing checks and helping to mail things today. I got to do the mail. Um, and we also have an AmeriCorps that um, I've taken over supervision of, and also uh, Jeremy has just started um, doing the weekly meetings with him and supervision of him, but I'm doing all the reporting. Uh, we did meet with our auditor, which I think is an important thing to report back on. We'll be preparing uh, financial, uh, new financial uh, policies that will come to the March meeting. They'll go to the Finance Committee first, and then we'll be bringing them to you um, to, to tighten up our policies here and make sure that um, we, we were doing pretty well, as it turned out. I mean, there was nothing, there was no red flags that we heard from him. But there were some good questions that we asked about the ways to do things, one of which is, you know, he didn't have an answer for, but do we have to pay, do, do volunteers have to pay taxes if they're getting store credit? Or how does that work? Is it just a trade and barter is actually taxable? So it's a little difficult. Uh, we have some questions that we have to get answered around that. Um, let's see. Um, I put a lot of things under here under the administrative benefits just so that uh, you understand kind of what we have uh, taken on in terms of some new work from the last month. And um, we've been doing a lot of outreach and partnerships, which is really exciting. Uh, we'll be rolling out new websites at both of our organizations. CTV is the priority. And it's a WordPress site, so we will be saving 
staff resources because we won't need a developer. We won't need to hire a Drupal developer to work on that. So we'll be saving funding and it'll be really easy for both volunteers and staff to, to make updates to that site. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and the Denver tools, um, Nick was just, I, I thought he was going to bounce off the walls last week. He was so happy because, you know, we've really taken a big risk in a way to be sort of bleeding edge with the Denver Open Media tools, and it's really paid off. The volunteer tracking tools are totally working, which is great, and uh, we'll be launching those um, on April 15th as well. So we're excited to have a lot of automation online that will enable us to do things that we used to have to have people be doing and we just don't have the resources for it anymore. Um, and the last thing I'll mention is uh, lots of work with Rotary and uh, a lot of presentations for me this last month, last couple of weeks, and still some to come. We are meeting with the county on Monday uh, to present to the CAO's office and to Susan Moriello. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did also meet today with the new owners of this space to talk about the future opportunities. Um, I think there's going to be some good opportunities there to stay here for a little bit longer. And then uh, we also are working with the Watsonville Film Festival mm -hmm. on a youth project so that we um, can utilize the funding that we got but didn't spend uh, about a year and a half ago. We were supposed to spend more funds in South County and the Irvine Foundation gave us a little more time and so we're able to put together a partnership with the Watsonville Film Festival that includes a three-day youth media workshop. And we're really excited about that. So I've been meeting with the mayor of Watsonville and the film festival organizers and there's some good partnerships that we're developing there. That's great. Yeah. So yes. very busy yeah. month. Busy. <laughs> yeah, so you guys have done an enormous amount of work. Thank you for that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So if there's any questions, I'd love to help you answer. I also have handed out an uh, org chart. I think somebody yeah, had made a request to have that yeah. printed out. I'll be done. I'll be done. Um, so there's also there's no executive director in here, but don't be alarmed. Um, the executive director would report to your board and manage the station director, and then also manage um, CMAP. But as you know, the executive director and IT manager from CMAP are only going to be 1.67 days per week moving forward after July 1st. That's what we would be willing to negotiate. Of course, that's based on whether or not you guys decide to move your contract forward. Oh, and we're hiring a station director um, right now. So the hiring committee is giving me suggestions for potential candidates. And then we will be doing interviews next Thursday and Friday and then do a second round of interviews probably sometime after the 18th. Hope to have somebody in in place here in, before the before the launch, obviously. Okay. All right. Any other questions for the executive director on her report? Okay. I think I heard you say, and that was more uh, mixed part, and I, I took that out from the uh, minutes. Um, I think I heard you say, but it was real fast, so that the the. Um, the capital expenditures, we got a good loan, you said, did you say that? We, we were able to uh, to get the loan from the bank. From and the credit union? Or yeah, we, we were, it was approved yesterday Great. from the credit union. And it's cash secured okay. against our money market account. That's <coughs> what we had proposed to the board at the last meeting. Got right. approved. Yeah. Took about a month. Yeah, I figured it. <laughs> That's what they said it would take. And um, so it takes them, once they approve it, it takes a couple of days for them to do their processes to get the paperwork ready for me to sign. So I'm waiting for them to call me in to sign the paperwork. So Nick is able to, to go out and... He can't yet, but when we have signed all the paperwork, then I will authorize him to go ahead and make the purchases. He's been waiting. For but he knows already exactly what he wants. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was part of the capital right. plan that we wrote. And, and that's all available. Yep. Yeah, that's he's been good. working with the vendors on that. So. Great, great. Yeah, it was so quick that I thought, because that was such mm -hmm. a great experience last meeting that we were going to do that. Yeah. And so I'm glad it worked. We did spend, I think the part that was might have, might have been quick too, is that we had to spend some money out of our operating about 13000 I think, to start on some of the things that we needed before right. that I he had to that. start moving on. So, but. But the, the, the good news is that there'll still be quite a bit that we can pay ourselves back as a capital expense come in the next couple of months. Yep. Okay. And so then the next item on the agenda is the discussion of proposed fees for public access. We'd ask to put that on the agenda. Um, we, we can discuss it or not. If you would ask to be. Is it printed out somewhere? Did you guys print it out? The agenda? No, the fee is the fees. No, no. no. okay, because it was, it was in the that. governance documents. What? Um, so let me check to make sure they're still in there. I forgot about that. 
about that. Sorry. That's okay. You know, you know, I, I, I feel like I don't, I don't even want to bring this up, but I love these reports. But I think last meeting we talked about getting these before the meeting, yeah. and so I, I, I feel remiss if I didn't bring that up. Okay. I usually do. I actually. Last time I did have it before the meeting. Okay. Um, this time I he said I was just going to do an oral report. Okay. I, so I, I mean, just, I just just to honor the conversation last time. I just wanted to bring it's it up. I, I, Absolutely. I feel like that was clear in my mind, and I looked at the packet before this meeting, and this okay. was not in it. So. Was it? Was it? Did we not have an, a report to the board last time from the evening and writing? I don't. I have to go Okay. But it's it's yeah. nice to have this before so I can review it and then maybe I have some questions sure. that mm -hmm. are in the margins. And, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, rather than being put on the spot, I don't feel like asking a question and looking like an idiot. You know, on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so maybe two for the next agenda, we could say written and oral report from sure, the ED, so that it's not yeah, so that I'm also really clear and on I don't that. Want to put you on the spot. Yeah. 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 That's no worries. <laughs> no, my my board has asked for the same thing and. The other thing, I, I, I don't know that there's anything to do about it, but um, uh, the meeting, the kickoff event is Passover. I don't know if that's going to make a difference uh, to any of the members. On Wednesday? Tuesday. Like that Tuesday, night. Tuesday, Tuesday the 15th oh, is, is Passover. Oh, on the 15th. Yeah. Mm. Is it Passover the whole week? But is it that evening? Like, do it's, people well, celebrate that evening? the first night at Passover is the Monday night. So oh, okay. I think it's the Monday night. I'm just okay. really. Do you think that it would prevent people from coming out that evening? I, Maybe? I, if it's the first night, it would. But not the third, the second I night? I don't, not necessarily. Okay. We could also just do a lunch, and then we could have a party on Friday night. That's true. I mean, there's no, I, mean, I think the whole idea with doing it on the 15th was just that. Yeah, starting the 14th. Yeah, the okay. stick of it. There, yeah, it begins. 14, Monday the 14th. So do folks feel like, I don't know much about Passover, so um, do folks feel like if we did it on Tuesday or Wednesday? I think the first night is the most important. First night, okay. is, yeah, the first night is, it for most sundown, people, the first sundown. night is the... Because it's sundown on the 14th. We yeah. might also just, I'm still working with staff on the details. I w really wanted them involved in the planning for that. So we met on Friday for our staff meeting and kind of talked about <coughs> what we want to do. and. Um, they have lots of ideas, <laughs> but they also are really busy, so we have to see what, what we can really do. I think um, we talked about doing a breakfast and an evening event, and I think probably what we'll just do is an evening event. But we may want to do that on Wednesday because Tuesday is also when government meetings are, so we may not get electeds coming. And mm, so maybe Wednesday right. might be a better day, but we can do like a press release for the 15th be open that night if people want to come by, but then have the event the next day. Well, you know, we could just have an event that lasts until all, Wednesday all week. <laughs> <breakfast. All right. laughs> we also thought that maybe Santa yeah. Cruzans wouldn't show up for a 7.30 breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. People like relax. Too much of sleep over. <laughs> just the Rotarians would come at that time. <laughs> They'd be like, what? Sleepover? Huh? So, all right. thank you. So you were looking for the I'm having trouble yeah. finding them actually, yeah. So I was looking through um, to find the policies that, that I had Google shared with you. I'm looking for it, yeah. Um, for the proposed fees, you mean? Yeah, I'm just wondering yeah. if we called it something else because I'm not seeing it. Well, how about if we go to the next item? It's called Can draft you? rules underscore Thank Nick you. and Kathy. No, okay. no, that's but not I not apologize, I only saw the Nick part, so. Huh? You don't think it starts with draft rules? No, because that's the that's the procedure stuff. I don't think the fee based stuff is in there. I I think it, it is. is. It is. Yeah. It is in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see it. I have it right here actually. So um, we decided that we really wanted. I hope this is the right one. It's What's called CT, one CTV said? policies underscore Nick KB dot dot. Well, that's dot dot in my okay. computer. Um, so it's called draft. Is that the one that we worked on on Saturday? Yeah, it's the one yeah. that I the, have it on my computer. That Kathy had. Yeah, I, when I took out the, the numbers. No, but I, I have Nick's original. Do you have the original? Yeah. yeah. Okay, because it's hard for me to remember everything off the top of my head. No, I understand. It, there's a lot. Um, but I can I can. Think of some of the different fees. If you want to find it, I, it's, I just kind of where it is. 
Um, so, you know, as we've talked about in the past, we're going to have fee-based services here at CTV. So one of the things that we're going to be charging for is checkouts and reservations. And they're really, really inexpensive. And we sort of feel like it's going to be a spectrum. So because we haven't charged fees for things in the past, we want to start kind of small. So it's going to be $20 for a 24-hour checkout for a camera. Wow. So it's nothing at all close to, I mean, that would be like double that for or triple that for hourly in the commercial world. But we're going to start at $20 an hour for the, the camera checkout. So we can make it really accessible to people. And then one of the good things is that we can then grow that. We can kind of go up in tiers. So we can go up to 40 an hour I mean, a day and then maybe 50 a day. A day. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, if you had to rent a camera commercially, it might be like $100 a day, you know, or more. So we feel like we're starting really good at a good level for folks to make it accessible. Um, and then the editing suites, um, I think for the editing suites, we're doing a little bit of moving things around so that we can make the editing suites look nicer and more attractive to people. And we're also going to uh, make my, I don't need an office, so we're gonna make my office into a um, hot studio. So um, you come in and you can make you know, a PSA in there or you can have a talk show. So it'll be really manageable for folks to use. If we have old equipment that we can use there, and it's also just people can see it when you're walking by. So we figure that'll be kind of a good, a good thing as well. Um, and then uh, the studio rentals themselves are at an hourly rate. But Matilda's going to look up for me. Yeah, the, the fee uh, field of good me was twenty two. Twenty two. Sorry, twenty two dollars a day yeah. for twenty four. For the field equipment, all field the field equipment. equipment. Yep, and then for the studio. Mm -hmm. Does that include mics? That would include basically our standard kit. Yeah. And so we would include mics in that. We would include probably a lighting kit in that as well. We want to make sure people have a good shoot. Um, and then we'll oh, go the studio. Rental. Yeah. There might be a lot of stuff about rentals. A lot of what we've had to do in the um, governance docs is really change the language around all kinds of things, really. Um, you know, we no longer have third-party agreements. We just have users who pay services, pay fees for services, and we have volunteers, certified volunteers. Um, you know, producers, we really are sort of seeing producers differently. You know, they're users mm -hmm. now. Um, so things, you you'll, when you look at that... <laughs> I remember the numbers, if you trust my memory. Yeah, do you remember the studio numbers? Yes. I can't remember. A minimum of a three hour. Oh, yeah. yes, that's right. So we'll so have 16 slots a week on Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. $75 per session. $75 per session. So you basically get a three hour block. An hour. $25 an hour, but we're not saying $25 an hour because you can't rent it by the hour. Right. You have to have it for a three-hour slot because that's how long it takes people to produce a, sh a one hour, a half, a half an hour, two half an hour shows. They can produce as much content as they want in that three-hour block, but they have to rent it out as a block. And um, Editing, you also say $20, $22. Per day? Per hour. Per hour. So, edit, so the editing suites are $22 per hour. The camera equipment is $22 per day, and the studio is $75 per block. Per block. Oh, yeah. Studios. Yep. So those are the three. And um, But I think you mentioned something about if it was, a, because I think you said something about that it would be less if it was a very short production. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think that we, because it, it, the problem is, is we don't want to be nickel and dime. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We really don't. We have a system already online that sort of has, has set, been set up this way. Because we, it's more work for us to have many people come in and do shorter term rentals. Mm -hmm. Or have, you know, um, you know, or more volunteers coming in and out and in and out and in and out. We just, we just don't have the staffing for that now. Mm -hmm. So we want people to really um, do those blocks. There's going to be a lottery for shows. This is something I think that's important for people to, to, to know, is that um, you know people. some people have had the same blocks for 18 years or 10 years or however long. We can't, we can't manage that that way anymore. So the way that we're going to do it is we're going to be doing a lottery for um, either the certified volunteers or for users to come in and do their shows. Um, so they're paying for the service, and then there's a lottery for um, use of that studio. 
and I don't know if we're going to do the lottery just for the, the, the certified volunteers and we would provide um, paid hours, certain hours, but um, probably we're going to have to do a lottery for everybody just to make it easier for us. And uh, I think another key component that you mentioned is that when a user books the service, their volunteer hours are charged immediately. Right. They don't um, get a refund if they don't show up. <laughs> they pay for it when they book the service. Just like you would pay for anything online. You know, if you buy tickets online, you don't get a refund if you decide not to come. So yeah. that's the same with us. Mm -hmm. you, book, you book the service, you show up, or you... <clears throat> Are they yeah, transferable? Forfeit, if somebody wants to transfer those to somebody else? Um, I know we, we've talked about that because we do realize that there may be instances that would be an executive director decision about some of that. I mean, you know, in the case of death or yeah, act of God happens. or something. I mean, there may be things that we can figure out for that. But I think, I think there's a provision in here that says that this <coughs> executive director still has the ability to maybe make some decisions around executive decisions. Executive decisions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the other thing that you put in here was, uh, so see we worked, and I think it's on the, on the agenda, but we worked, uh, he and I looked at what Kathy and Nick mm -hmm. did on the policies and procedures, and that's what you were sent. Uh, I noticed that there was also something in there that if people lose equipment, damage mm -hmm. equipment, mm -hmm. and then there's a certain a process for that that people would have to pay you know twenty five dollars a month to in order to pay that off and things like that. So you've looked through a lot of different aspects. Okay. Yeah, and really we want to move to making it sort of more the way that you deal with a business. Yeah. You know, if you don't bring a rental, like if you rent stuff for a wedding and you don't bring it back, okay. you get taken a small claim score. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's very nice of us to be like, oh, we'll let you pay it off for three months. But really, we're kind of in a position where we can't really yeah. offer yeah. that. And then it's also a lot of administration for us to have to keep track of. So we have to be really careful about making decisions like that because it's a liability for the organization to have to you know, be too much bending over backwards, which we've kind of done a lot of that in the past. And we're kind of not in a position to do that anymore. Okay. And that led us right into the fact that Matilda put in, we put in the board packet, the proposed policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. um, they're there for you to read and look at, but we don't need any kind of action at this item. It will go to the governance committee, uh, again, for one final review before it comes back to the board, hopefully by the next board meeting. Can we discuss a couple of those highlighted things? Go ahead, Tom. I was going to ask a question about the highlighted things. Right. Um, because it's not tracked, so I didn't know if that was, these were completely new or just areas where things have changed. No, the, the high, a lot of has changed. We have given uh, already several uh, people the opportunity to look at our work in progress. Mm -hmm. Now what we did was we, we chunked everything that the governance committee has looked at twice, uh, Kathy and Nick have, have looked mm -hmm. at it, and, and he and I, and Nathan has looked at it. You know, it was all, you know, uh, struck out, different color for, for this, uh, for, for blue for her, blue, red right. for her, because Kathy D'Angelo and Craig Goldson had done a lot of stuff, work also before we, we got started on this. But it became too cumbersome and also too long. So Keith said, why don't we just take out everything that we have already a couple times said, strike it out, strike it out. And so governance has looked at it twice. We have looked at it a couple more times. They have looked mm -hmm. at it. So this is the result of all of that work. From Kathy, from Craig, from us, the governance, from them, and then again, the governors and all that. So, but I highlighted a couple things that I think still need to be even clearer. What do we mean? And one of the things is the first one is that we talked about when Nathan and Nick and I'm not sure, I think you and the two of us were there, about the term of user and producer. Because it appears to us that we have users who use the facilities and do things, but they're not necessarily, not necessarily all of them being producers with, um, you know, renting uh, equipment in the studio. They may, they may work on, on uh, editing or uh, you 
you know, get some cameras or something, but not necessarily the producers in, in the bigger sense. So we then added, do you remember, Nathan, that for the purpose of this document, a user who reserves the studio or equipment is called a producer. Can I say a point of information? I'm, I'm a little concerned that maybe the changes that Nick and I made didn't make it into this document. Oh, yes, they did. We okay, because... Line by line. So maybe you guys made, changed it back. I don't no, know, because we took out case, producer entirely. Right, and the okay. total search for producer in every case. Yes. And so okay. we... Because sometimes it doesn't work to use the word user, because the... Um, um, since I already changed it, but or, or kept it, um, the word user doesn't always work because sometimes really you mean a producer. Is this something we could have a conversation yeah. in the governance community about? No, it's and fine. Come to an agreement because I, th I think we could waste. So I mean, I probably would waste your time because I might not agree right. um, with how we might want to manage that language. And I just want to explain to people why there's a highlight, and people, you know, please give us feedback on that and. And maybe Nathan has some more ideas about it too. But that was one of the areas. And when I did go, you know, I, I looked for everything with producer and with user. It grammatically and conceptually, it just didn't make any sense to always call somebody who would be called a user, a, a producer, only a user. It didn't make any sense. So that's one item. And then the next one that is highlighted is. Uh, Though, uh, for clarification, no ref refunds will be made on cancelled reservations for rental equipment and studio units. I just for want to make. I just want to. Well, this was about cancelling a res reservation. Correct. So I just want to make sure that that we didn't look over it, but that this is exactly what we want to do. And so, if that's the case, then I'll um, take that color out. The next item is, there were a couple of things. Uh, the, the first one is, uh, Nathan asked us to, Nathan asked us to define hate speech. Have you had some chance to think about it some more? It's in the potentially objectionable program content, you know, excessive profane language, excessive nudity, sexual activity. And uh, that's why it's highlighted. We can do that in the yeah. governance committee because Nathan's on the governance committee. Okay, so you want to do it there? Yeah. Okay. Then, on the series program, there was there are three, three uh, paragraphs. Studio series producers may reserve a tradition, transitional studio time slot depending on the length of their program and the availability of the time slot. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what this meant. Well, um, I think we had changed it to staff had wanted that to be a lottery-based system, so it sounds like it got changed, and I'm. So I, it's hard for me to address that because yeah. I think we want it to be a lottery system because that makes it more efficient for us. Right. And it would require us more staff time if we're managing um, those reservations differently. We right. needed to work with the online system, and that's, that's sort of the priority is to make sure that the, the time slots that we have can be managed um, effectively online. So it sounds like we need you and Nick to give this a real close look and we give did. us some feedback. We, we did, yeah. but some of the things that she's raising are things we don't maybe don't agree on. Well, it's not so much agree upon. It's just that since I didn't understand what it meant, I wasn't sure uh, because I think it was still in your in your piece. That may, you may have overlooked it, but it was as far as I know, it was still in there, and I'll check that. But I just didn't understand it. So if this is of no, you know, transitional slots and permanent slots are no longer in existence, then we just junk it. Yeah, I, I, I'm a little concerned because the I can't find the original. So, Google so if I may, I think the point at this meeting is to say that the highlighted areas are still going to be discussed by the government. By the government. Yes. Thanks, Evan. Yes. Sounds good to me. <laughs> And, but you know, I mean, I mean, th those are the only. Because we're not going to come up with a resolution. Yeah. Yeah. No. An agreement. I would, I would love to know what a user versus a producer and all that mm -hmm. is, but I, I, I trust the governance committee. What about the expulsion from the organization? Is that a, an, an importance to all of us that we have that? But wait, isn't it the case that this is going to be? 
tailored further by a committee and yeah, brought to this really board right. for what the committee would for recommend final, final yeah. approval. And if yeah. this board at that time on the document that's being recommended for final approval has comments or desires further work on it, this board would then direct that at that point. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what we did, and so this is what we got so far. I mean, if you still don't want to see it, then that's okay. We can take no, it no, 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 but what, I, what I'm hearing from the executive yeah. director, certainly, and, and just from the fact that there are highlighted sections here that require further work, is right. that this isn't being brought to this board for a recommended final approval. Yep. No, that's not what we're saying. We just want to get some input if, if people want to input. It's, well, in, it's in there so we can, the committee can get it. And I agree. Yeah. If this board would take time to look at that and give the committee some right. feedback about its thoughts, in particular about the highlighted portions, right. then the committee could go to work on that and hopefully bring it back to this board mm -hmm. in a, a final form or a proposed final form. And I, the question was, why is there highlighted? Right. The and so and that, we answered that question. Yes. Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> but anyway, so governors, uh, you know, with your permission, we're going to continue working on this. Okay. Uh, the next item on there was that um, we met with the auditor. Kathy mentioned that already. That the key thing for this board is that the auditor mentioned that in the past we had a person who every month did all the little things that had to happen to make the month close and be okay. We don't have that person on staff now, so the auditor recommended we have a list of things that must be done every month. Not the things, we already know what those things are, signing off on the bank statement, et cetera. But having a list, we sign off on the bank statement, we do this, we do that, we do the other, which both the auditor and the executive director every month sign off and keep in a file for the auditor. Mm -hmm. So those policies have been given to Kathy to come up with a policy, John? and your plan, I believe, is to have that for the next board meeting. And Absolutely. it has to go through the treasurer first. Okay. So Joe needs to approve that, yeah. and the finance committee needs to look at it as well. Okay. Good. And one other thing that will affect this board is that the auditor recommended that the finance committee meet a week before the board meeting instead of the day out. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense. So. And also that we don't like that it's actually preferable to bring things quarterly to the whole board, mm -hmm. but that the finance committee meets and checks in, or the treasurer meets and checks in every month. And the finance committee meets quarterly, brings things to the board quarterly. Yeah. They're, they're still accessing the, the, the yeah. reporting, but that you're not bringing the reporting to the full board every single month. Yeah. There's, most nonprofits don't do that. Okay. okay, and then we did put an uh, agenda item 9A on here, which yeah. uh, we need to change the like emergency edition. We need to change the signers on the checking account. That's correct. Uh, James. Uh, yeah, and act I actually have a, a resolution here. Um, can I go ahead and just read the resolution uh, for what we're going to be doing here? Uh, right now it's to approve the following board uh, officers and employees as signers on the Santa Cruz uh, Community Credit Union account. And that's going to be uh, Keith uh, uh, Gudger. Um, we're going to have Matilda Ra uh, Ran, I believe, uh, still on that account? or. Is Okay. I've been trying to get okay. my signature That's right. to them. You can take care okay. of it tomorrow. Okay, you'll be able to take care of it. So you'll. You know, I've tried three times. Okay, um, and uh, so uh, you would. Uh, this would be to approve uh, you as well in there. Uh, myself, James Fisher, Joe Hall, and then uh, uh, Ann K. Uh, Bisbee. Otherwise, is Kathy Bisbee. <laughs> uh, and that is what uh, this resolution is right here. So, what are you moving? <laughs> I am. I am making a motion uh, that we approve this. Second. Okay. Okay, I don't know that we did any discussion, so I'll take a vote. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> and we'll Thank on. you. The next item is the oral report of the chair. Um, I wanted to report that uh, some of the volunteers, specifically Sandra Lee, has set up a temporary studio in Boulder Creek, which is up and working, and some of the members have already produced shows, and it seems to be, they seem to be oh. very happy mm -hmm. with it. So we have happy members, and content is still being produced even though it goes down. Excellent. Our Excellent. camera person here is smiling. I think he's been <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And um, I mean, is that I, our equipment, or is it? Some it's our old it, equipment. Old equipment. Oh, I see. Great. Very nice. Very Several nice. of us went up okay. there and helped set it up. And, yeah. Uh, All right. Where does is that, that again? Is, is that, that Barry's or Barry's? Okay. The Odd Fellows. 
Somebody just the old post office. Oh, that's I'd like to go in there and make a little, take a little tour of that place. Okay. Is, yeah. is that going to be a Thanks, Barry. permanent? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a. We can hold our next temporary. meeting there. I'd like to. It, take Keith a tour. and I yeah. made a sort of a, an exception <coughs> to. We don't really have a policy. We were made a request by a member until <coughs> we granted their request um, for a temporary <coughs> time period while we were closed. Okay. I think at the end of the, you know, when we reopen, we'll mm -hmm. consider moving forward. But it seems like it's going well, so. You know, I think we would want to continue with it. Well, that would be yeah. encouraging. Cool. Nice. Yeah. We plan to have um, a spring break event with uh, in conjunction with Boulder Creek Rec District. It's been approved oh, nice. by the Rec District, uh, my understanding. Yes. Great. It's nice. been in touch with Hallie, and they're moving right along, so that's wonderful. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, that's very mm -hmm. nice. And that's about uh, it. Uh, are there any uh, board member or staff requests for specific items to appear on the next meeting agenda? When is the next meeting? That's what I've been trying to find. Four right. weeks from today. Yeah, it's March 27th. March 27th. Oh, March 27th. I'll, I'll be in Ireland. Sorry. 27th. Ooh. I may be in Hawaii. You, you know. can't Skype in <laughs> from <laughs> Ireland? <laughs> there you go. From the pub? We would like right. to see <laughs> Ireland. <Right. laughs> It'll be green. It'll be green. It's time from there. So you already told that the uh, finance policies will be at the Mars board meeting? Yes. Yes, they will. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, the, the, uh, I'm curious, are, are we going to be able to keep the slots we have on the air when we combine these ch channels and so on and so forth? Well, the slots that we used to have on the air have already changed because members upload their own content to the channels yeah. now. Right. And so they self-select what blocks of programming they are want available. to be scheduled well, based on what's available. Nice. It's all done online now. So, so it's, I it's will changed. Stay, I will stay where I am if I choose. So, so um, it'll depend on what's available on the when on the I system. find out? Because there's no point in my continuing making mm. programs if I'm not going to have a. Well, slot. you have a series program, right? Yeah. So your series program is still the same time. It'll still right be. Now. For oh, right now, it's still the same. Are you doing a live show or are you turning in a program? I'm turning in a program. So, and are you turning it in online digitally now? Yes. That's great. So when you choose how when you oh, when okay. you choose how you want to schedule it, that's what you get. So you probably have already and been that getting won't change is, is well, my question. Yeah, probably not because you've already been getting that same time, okay. right? right? So as long as it's it's really in the hands of our users now. Right. It's you yeah. you as members. Because I advertise it, you know the seniors sure. it's every Thursday and Saturday. It's at really six. your choice as so, you go into okay. the system when you're when you're yeah, putting okay. it in on a programming block. So you, I didn't know whether I. Somebody would say, well, you can't have that anymore. Somebody yeah. else is but getting it. To be clear, it is first come, first serve. It is. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're through with the regular part of the board meeting. We are due now to adjourn into closed session pursuant to Government Code 54956.9, okay. Conference with Legal Counsel. So I would like to do that at this point. So we want a motion to adjourn. 